How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at The Nun. This is from 2018 and is the fifth overall Conjuring film uh, and is a prequel to The Conjuring Chapter 2. This is the movie where we find out the origin story of the creepy nun that appeared in that movie. Uh, this movie is directed by Corin Hardy and stars Thaisa Farmiga, who is the younger sister of Vera Farmiga, who plays Lorraine Warren in the mainline entries. Cool to see them keeping the family here. Um, also, Thaisa did a lot of American Horror Story as well. Uh, also in this movie is uh, Demian Beechett and Jonas Blo uh, Bloquet. Not 100% sure how to pronounce that. Uh, but also, uh, this movie is produced by James Wan, who is the series creator who directed The Conjuring 1 and 2. Cool to see him having some involvement in here. Now, that being said, talking about The Nun, I guess the first thing we should mention is the initial reception and this movie's kind of reputation that it has. When this movie first came out, if you had just listened to those early critic reviews, you would have thought this was the worst thing ever. It's It's been only five years since this movie came out, but I am proud to say that we've seen the angry critic motif kind of die down and people becoming a little more rational. The thing is... A lot of people complained about this movie when it first came out, but when I went to the theater, I saw it, you know, around the time when it first came out pretty quickly. I watched it, and I really liked it, and I had fun with this movie, and I left the theater going, oh man, that was a fun movie. Come home to YouTube, watch reviews, everybody's trashing it. But I have to say, and I'll stand by this, the Nun is the most underrated Conjuring movie, and I'm not saying it's perfect. It definitely has some faults. Some of the moments in here get a little bit too big too quick and do feel a little bit cartoony, and it's not the scariest one ever, and it's not the best at, you know, mastering that tension. But overall, I really do like this movie. It does something different. The castle setting does feel super different than a normal Conjuring movie, and between the castle setting and the over-the-top scares, it does kind of have a more classic horror motif behind it than a lot of the other movies do, and I think, you know, The Conjuring, the first two films, really good but really serious, and I think with the first two being so serious, it is a little hard for some people to adjust to some of the more over-the-top moments in this movie, but I think if you take it for what it is, there's a lot of enjoyment to be found in here, and overall, I do think this is a pretty fun movie. Like I said, not perfect, but compared to how much people complained about this early on, I'd say this is easily the most underrated one in the franchise. I really did like it. Uh, I guess, going into more detail, Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers. We're going to be primarily talking about the setup. Uh, but I do want to make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this movie is about. Um, I'll just be avoiding the twist and the big reveals later on and stuff. So no major spoilers. But let's do some analysis. Anyway, we open up with two nuns on the run in this castle. The older nun gets attacked and killed, but as she's dying, she leaves a message. It needs a vessel. And this will inspire the younger nun to jump out of a window and hang herself. And in her hand, she's clutching a mysterious key. Now, eventually the body is found, and the church sends someone in to investigate. They need to find out what led to the nun's death and determine if the grounds of the abbey are still holy. 
So they have this guy who's an older priest, and they use him for the extreme and bizarre cases. So he's a little bit of a specialist, kind of like an X-Files priest. Uh, they send him, and they pair him up with a younger nun, Thaisa Farmiga's character, and she doesn't know why they picked her. She's young, she hasn't even taken her vows yet, but the older priest says, there's a reason you're here, and we'll figure this out as we go along. They go to the village, and they meet Frenchie, the, the guy who discovered the body, and Frenchie talks about how everyone in the village is afraid of the abbey, and a lot of people won't go near it. He's the delivery boy. The abbey made uh, certain arrangements to get supplies from the village, and he says he goes there every couple weeks, and he's never even seen any of the nuns. He just drops the stuff off and gets out of there. So they get Frenchie to take them to the haunted castle, and that sort of assembles the good uh, core team there. And overall, I really do like this team, and it's nice classic arrangement there. The older expert, the young new person with a sense of, you know, purpose and destiny behind her, and then the guy that's completely removed from this world that is a little bit more of a comedic character. So, you know, younger, older, comedy guy. Yeah, it's a nice classic troupe there, and I really do love the cast of this movie. Uh, but anyway, they go to the castle, and of course they know something's up. There's fewer nuns than you would expect, and they all seem to be in a state of anxiety. Uh, they have weird things, you know, like the main nun is in a shroud and you don't ever see her face. They take vows of silence past a certain time at night, and, you know, you, you're not supposed to talk to them in the darkness. And there's always at least one nun praying all the time, constant prayer to keep something contained as best that they can but what's going on here and you know I do love a good mystery like this the idea that something terrible has happened here but we don't know what it is at first a little bit reminiscent of LV426 uh, from the Alien franchise but I do like that trying to figure out what's going on in this castle and it's pretty cool uh, but from there we do get, you know, a, a good, good creepy castle setting, some spooky visions and encounters with evil spirits, and a decent amount of uncovering this mystery and figuring out what it is. But of course, as with the title, among these nuns, one of them isn't really a nun. There's going to be something off with one of them, and it's really an evil spirit, something big and powerful and scary. All right, that's a that's a cool setup. I guess when we go in and talk about specifics, let's go ahead and knock the flaws out of the way. You know, everyone talks about them. Uh, I think I do have a proper analysis here of uh, of the basis of what they are. Uh, first, the characters don't have as much of a tie as the Conjuring characters really uh, normally do. In most of the Conjuring movies, it's an innocent family that an evil spirit has tied itself to, and they want to go on and live their happy lives, but they're unable to because they're constantly being harassed by some sort of evil spirit. It's a personal connection a personal story, how do I save my family and get out? The characters in The Nun are kind of like an adventure team. They're going in here to solve this mystery, but it's not really a personal, or at least not as personal as it is with the other characters. You know, they don't really need to be in the Abbey. They're just kind of investigating. So there is a little bit less of a tie there. And also... The, the tension, and in turn, the scares, aren't quite as good. And, and like I say, a, a lot of times, it's hard to really analyze how exactly to do tension perfectly. It's a very delicate art of building something up 
and then releasing it and yeah it's it's hard to exactly say but I think part of the reason is it does go a little bit too big a little too fast and there's scares like I'll cover the grave scare in a little bit but the grave scare is a really big scare and it happens really early in this movie and why I do like the scene going that big that quick not exactly something you want to do with tension you want to build it up you don't want to just jump to something that extreme that quick and also we're in the castle pretty much the whole time and without really any safe point you know there, there's no safe place for the characters to really retreat to and in turn we don't get that build up and release of tension being at a 9 out of 10 the whole time it starts to take this 9 and pull it down to a 5 you know so like I said it's not the worst thing ever but when you talk about the art of building tension yeah this movie doesn't do it the best and in turn it's not the scariest moving on to divisive things that I still do like about this movie I mentioned the scares and yeah the scares do go too big too fast but they are also a little over the top and sometimes a little cartoony and the best scene that emphasizes this is the grave scene in this movie a character is exploring a graveyard and they get pushed into an open grave then the nun uses her powers to fill over the top of that grave complete with growing the grass over the top and the camera pans up and the character who just got buried has their name etched on a tombstone and then you pan down and you see that little grave bell uh, ringing that whole saved by the bell concept but yeah the nun literally buries someone alive and has a custom made tombstone with their name across the top that is a little out there and when we compare this to the mainline conjuring entries where like the first half of a conjuring movie it's usually something like I heard a squeaky door is there a ghost here and it builds it up subtly normally you know oh look there's a chair sliding it's normally very subtle and a very slow steady deliberate buildup in the nun we're jumping to buried alive with custom tombstone and the thing is why that's not the way to go to make it the scariest there's no denying that that's pretty fun um, my family plays this game betrayal at house on the hill or haunted hill uh, uh, betrayal at house on the haunted hill um, it's a really fun game and in that game whenever you go into a new room you get a classic horror movie concept and there are always these fun over the top classic horror movie things and I feel like several of the scares in The Nun remind me of the scares in that game very classic feeling very big scares and I do I, I know they're not the scariest and they can come off as kinda goofy but I do like how big they go and how extreme this movie can get um, building off of that another kind of divisive thing that I do like is just how big we do get towards the end the end the final battle the final fight scene it does get a little more epic than you really would suspect and part of that is a relic that they find in this movie it is like an Indiana Jones level relic and really the ending of this movie does kind of have an Indiana Jones-esque feel um, and yeah the ending goes pretty far but that being said again I still think it's something that's pretty fun uh, moving on to uh, moving on to the, the things that I really really did like and again a large part of the reason why I do say this is underrated is this is the conjuring movie that does feel a little different you know and, and not not so different that it doesn't feel like part of the series it still does have the conjuring feel it still does feel in world which is important but that being said a lot of the conjuring movies are haunted house movies 
and they're really subtle and pretty personal, which is good, but then we get to this movie, and this movie is big, over-the-top, haunted castle. I have to say, I love the castle setting. It was a different thing for the Conjuring universe. They're shooting in a real castle, and I think it really is in Romania. It, 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 it just, it looks so nice. And the castle gives it a unique feel, but also a really classical horror feel. And it really feels like movies you don't see too often nowadays. It really did give it a classic old school horror feel to it. And you don't really get that too much, you know. So we do have this really lovely haunted castle. And I really can't sing its praises enough. There's several good scares, you know, like I said, they are a little over the top, but several really good moments sprinkled pretty all evenly all throughout. There is a really good reveal when it comes to what's going on with these nuns, and I found that when that was revealed, it was a pretty cool twist. Um, but also, there's some fun camera work in this movie that really doesn't get the love it deserves. You know, several scenes where the camera pans up or down, and there's a ton of movement and really interesting shot choices. You know, her from above looking down and this big reveal. And I really do like just how much the camera moves around in this movie and, and how it really seems to appreciate the scale of things. So, yeah, um... Overall, I know this movie does have faults. I'm not saying, oh, this is a, a overlooked masterpiece or anything. It definitely does go too big too quick. It definitely doesn't have as much tension as a regular Conjuring movie, and it doesn't feel near as personal as a mainline Conjuring movie. But that being said, for a movie that tries something different, you know, hey, let's do an old school uh, haunted castle movie, let's do bigger cartoony scares, you know, it's the Conjuring movie that's a little bit of the odd one out, and in turn I can appreciate it for being experimental but still feeling like the world of the Conjuring, and you know, I always like a fun horror movie, and it doesn't necessarily matter if it's the scariest thing ever, it, it is really fun, and you get to that big over-the-top cinematic ending, and yeah, okay, it's not, it's no Conjuring 1, 2, or Annabelle creation, but I still had a, a bit of fun with this movie, and like I said, not the best one in the series by far, but the most underrated one, and I think if you saw those early reviews and you missed out on this movie, it definitely is worth a watch. Don't go in expect or expecting The Conjuring 2, but it is definitely worth seeing, and I thought it was pretty fun. Uh, supposedly later this year they are going to finally put out The Nun 2, and fingers crossed for that. Uh, hopefully we get a, a really good uh, sequel, so I'm, I'm waiting for that. I, I like pretty much all the movies in The Conjuring franchise, granted some of them more than others, but I do feel that this was uh, one that gets a little bit overlooked. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, uh, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Conjuring playlist. In this playlist, you should be able to find my reviews for Part 1, uh, Part 2, the Annabelle spinoff. Oh, actually, I did cover uh, the third one as well. The Devil Made Me Do It. Not the best one, but again, fine. Uh, I also have a review for the Conjuring the Lover comic and um, a, a physical media collection. So anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Conjuring playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.